fishing in Alameda Creek, and I'll be using a ultralight setup this time. I have a five and a half foot fishing. Welcome to today's Western Angler. I'm your host, Fred Beliba. Today I'll be trout fishing in Alameda Creek at a campground and picnic area called Rancho Aguirre. This is a, a real good place to bring your fa no. Keep on going. We'll be, today I'll be trout fishing for rainbow trout. Uh, it's been about two weeks since they planted trout. I'm going to be using some light spinning gear today. I have a five and a half foot ultralight spinning pole with a ultralight spinning reel. I have six pound test on and I'm only using a swivel with a leadered hook and it's barbless. Now I'll be very, uh, there'll be a variation of this, this here, this, there'll be a variation here. I'll be using uh, just a swivel at first and then when I get into some deeper water, I'll be adding a small split shot or I'll be taking the split shot off, split shot off and then I'll just be going right back to the swivel. So uh, this is a very light, light outfit. My other shows, I showed you how to fly fish on this stream, and then I showed you how to bait fish with a fly pole. Now I'm going to show you how to trout fish with the ultralight, and uh, I'm going to be using salmon eggs today. Let's go do it. Lots of water. Should be fly fishing. Now the method I use here on the uh, spinning outfit is almost the same technique that I use with my fly pole. I left some line out and probably double the, double the length of the, of the fishing pole. And I bring it in my left hand and create a slack and then what I do is I throw it out and then just let it drift down with the water. Now I have no weight on here because this is pretty deep water in here and I have no weight and then what I do is I just let it go right to the bale and then just wait for the strike. Now what it'll do is it'll drift down with the current the same way that I do or the same technique that I do with the, uh, with the fly pole except there's an ultralight and you gotta throw it in there. Or now when it, when it completes, its, uh, completes the end of the cast then you can reel it in and I lost my bait already. You could use that method there or you can reel it in and use the bale in your cast. Instead of doing it that way, you can just flip the bale and flip your cast out and then just uh, tighten up your line, close the bale and get ready for, for the strike. Hold the line in your left hand tight so that you can feel the hit and just let it drift down with the water in this, this way here. Now I'm using six pound test, so it's very, the, the touch is going to be very, very light. I'll be able to really feel the strike when it happens. That's why the ultralight, a lot of people like the ultralight spinning rod when you're trout fishing. Because the fish are, are, are small in certain areas and they like the, uh, the ultralight for the, for the feel of the, of the play of the fish. So I'm at the end of my cast, so what I'll do is I'll bring it in. And you can reel it in like this here and then just get your your amount here that you, you usually use for a cast and then just throw it right on in and then close your bail and then again pull it pull it tight so that there's no slack in your line so that you can feel the hit. 
and that's always done in the left hand. Or you can just let it go and just feel it with the pole, like this here, and just have the line go from the bale right up to the first eye there and just hold on it tight. And then you just let it drift on down, starting up here, and letting it drift right on down with the current of the water. Just let it drift on naturally. And then you can reel it in. Again, using the spinning reel, you reel it in and then go right back to your cast. And then when you finish your, at the end of your cast there, you can reel it in and tighten it up. And just let it go right on down. And that's why in this water here, it's pretty deep in this hole here. I don't have any BB shot on her or any weight at all because I want it to drift down. There we go, I got a hit there. I want it to drift down, fish on, fish on. I want it to drift down there, fish on. It's a nice rainbow. Again, we're going for a rainbow trout. These are planted fish. The uh, limit here is five fish in possession. You do need a fishing license, and you can only fish this stream during trout season, which is from April to November. And the state does plant this, this stream here two times a month during that period. Between April and November, they will plant two times a month. And there's our first fish there. And let's bait up and do it again. Again, you just bring it right on up to your casting where you're going to be able to cast it out and just let it go right, throw it right out there and then close your bale up. And just let it drift right on down with the current of the water. Now, with this ultralight setup, you'll be able to feel the taps very easily. That's why, again, I say that a lot of people like the ultralight setup. It gives them a, a, a better feeling of the play on the fish. Now, the fish only range between 8 and maybe 12 inches. So you're dealing with some small planted trout. So a lot of people like the uh, ultralight setup. Again, I go ahead and cast, and I'll close the bale. Close the bale up, and then I'll just tighten it up to where I can feel it. You want to tighten up all the slack in your pole. Keep your hand on the, on, the, uh, on the handle of the reel so that when you do strike, you're, uh, you're ready to reel it in. Now when you're at the end of the, of the cast like I am, when it drifts down and it gets straightened out, then you just bring it right back in and uh, I've got a little, little, little nudge there. It might be dragging on the bottom because I am at the back of the end of my cast here. So what you do is you just reel it right back in and then you start the procedure all over again. You open up your bale and you flip it right on out there. Close your bale up, tighten your line, so you have no slack between you and your bait, so that you can feel when the, when the fish hits, so that you can set that hook. Had a hit right there. Had a hit right there. So we'll just bait right back up. Now we know they're right there, so you just want to stay right here and not make so much commotion in this play in the in the stream here because you don't want to scare them again this is uh there's not a lot of water in this stream and if you do a lot of moving around with your feet then you're going to uh 
kick up a lot of debris on the bottom and it's going to flow down and scare these fish. So now that we have found them, we just want to stay right here. And again, I'll open up the bale and, and uh, cast it out there and then close the bale real quick, tighten up the line and get ready for that hit. It's a very easy procedure now. When we get into this little bit of faster water, then I'll add a BB shot so that it doesn't uh, stay on the top of the water. It'll, it'll give it a little bit of, of depth to it and bring it right down again to where I like that level to where the fish are feeding. The fish are feeding not on the surface because they aren't surfacing and not on the bottom because the trout aren't a bottom feeder. They're right in between there, in between that level someplace and that's where you have to find where that medium is where they're, where they're feeding. Now again, I'm at the bottom, of, at the end of my cast here, so I'm going to reel it in. And I'll start all over. I'll open the bale up. And I'll cast it out there. Flip that, bring the, uh, the tip, rod tip up a little bit to uh, let some line out and then tighten it up and let it drift on down. And again, with, with no weight on there, it will stay pretty well at a certain depth until you get to the end of your cast and then your end of your cast will make it come on down. When it feels the end of the, end of the rod or the end of the line, the, the, the bait, even with, the, with the, just a swivel on there, will tend to sink and you don't want that because then that's where you're going to pick up your, your carp or your, your, uh, your suckers and your squaw fish. And the trout aren't feeding in that, in that depth. They're feeding, like I said again, in between um, uh, the surface and the bottom. And that's where it just takes time to find out where they're feeding. Just trial and error. And that's why I like, again, I, I like to mention, I got to hit there. I like the, uh, the quick release split shot so that I can change very quickly. When I get to a, a section of water where it's fa uh, coming from, from either fast and I add on a weight and into slow water like this, this, this one here, this area where we're fishing, I, I can take it off and then again I can add it real quick. It just depends on, on the water condition. I got another little tap there. Now, in some places like this here, <clears throat> some people will uh, would like to add on a bobber and let it drift down. And I'll uh, go into that procedure after this cast. I'll add a bobber onto it so that you can see uh, the different techniques of, of fishing with a with an ultralight or a spinning rod. Now, when you add a bobber onto it, what you're doing is you're putting the bobber on, and you're, you all, on every cast, you always have the same distance between the surface of the water and, and into the water. You always have the same distance. So you're feeding at that same level all the time. And I'll add a bobber here. And I think we want a little more depth than that. So how you hook the bobber on, you hook the bottom of the hook on the line that's going to your bait. You have, is it going? How you hook the bobber on is you hook the, bo the, the bottom hook of the bobber on the line that is going to the bottom, of, or the bottom of your line, which would be facing your hook. And your tab, the top of the bobber would be up, would be attached to the, to the line that is closest to the tip of your of your pole so that when it sits it sits with the white up okay with the white up now it's going to sit pretty high here because I don't have any weight on but if you watch that bobber there you'll see when I get a hit it'll take it now what a bobber does is it keeps that bait consistent all the time you're feeding at the same level so if they're at uh, feeding at two feet or at a foot and a half, every cast is going to be consistent. The 
Let's get a little more depth on that. I think that they're feeding just a little bit lower than that. Not much, just a little bit. Okay, that gives me about a two foot, two and a half foot drift there. We'll start up here so we can get a real good float. We'll get right into those trees there and see if we can pull one out. What you can do is you can watch the bobber. You don't need to keep the, the line tight on a bobber. Not real tight. You can, you can let some slack out, but don't get too much slack because as soon as that bobber goes down or you get a hit, you want to be pretty close to where you can um, hit it on that strike when he hits it. You don't want to give too much slack out, but you don't want to keep it tight because then the barber won't have any, any slack to go downstream. There, I got a hit right there. Got him. Fish on. Fish on. Now that we caught this one at that level, we can keep it right there and then we can duplicate that cast again. And since he took it right at that two and a half foot level with that bobber, we can go right back again with the next cast and possibly catch uh, another one that is feeding in the same area at the same depth. It's another nice fish, another nice fish. And it's the same procedure. You just bring it right on up to your casting height. And I have to add some salmon eggs to it. Now, again, a bobber works really good when the pool is, is deep like this and there's hardly any current. The bobber won't work when there's a lot of current because it doesn't have enough time to let the bait sink down because it's going to catch the speed of the current and go. So you won't have enough time to, uh, to cover a lot, of the, a lot of the fishing area that you want if you were in faster water using this technique here. This is a real good technique to use when the water is barely moving like this, like this pool is here. There's a very good pool to, uh, to demonstrate this, uh, this technique here. So I got another hit there. Got another hit there. Now you want to be right on top of that because uh, these fish uh, hit quick and with this bobber uh, they'll have a tendency to drop it when they feel uh, they feel that, that, that tug or that weight on the end of it. So that's actually what you should be doing without the bobber is that uh, you should be hitting it and, and setting the hook by that time. So. That's why you have to watch your bobber, and as soon as you see it, the first hit is strike because you have slack out and you want to make sure that you hit that fish when he hits it. Because as soon as that fish feels the weight of that bobber, he'll be off. He'll, he'll drop it because he feels that. So you have to strike as soon as you, you see that bobber go down. I'm using a uh, number 10 black barbless hook. I like to use barbless because in some areas I like to catch and release. Um, a lot of the, of the native fish, I like to, uh, when I go fishing up north or, or, uh, or in the Sierras or, or in the mountains where I'm catching native fish, I like the barbless hook. Here, I got a hit here. I got a hit there. He is. Missed him. So I like to use barbless hooks so that I can catch and I can release and not hurt the fish. And I'm using a size 10, and this is just a size 10 with a uh, commercial leader on it, with commercial package of hooks. Size 10, black hook, I, I don't use gold hooks. 
Some people like gold hooks. Uh, I just have, uh, throughout the years, I've had better luck with just the black commercial leadered hook. So I've just stayed with them. But you can use a gold hook if you're used to using a gold salmon hook. It's all right, or if you'd like to tie your own uh, on your own leader, that's fine. It doesn't, just whatever, whatever you like to do, whatever you're used to doing, then just go ahead and continue doing it. And um, maybe if you use some of the techniques that I've been able to show you, there's a hit right there. Seen that bobber go down, and I wasn't ready for it. Always get ready to pull that trigger on these trout. Let's see if I can bring it right back again. Now, when you bring that bobber back up on the end of your cast, you're in that feeding area, so, so bring it in real slow. Don't crank it on in and make a lot of racket because this bobber will, will make a lot of racket coming in. Let's see if I can put it right in front of his nose again. Let me lift some more line out here. Maybe I can get them down there. That's me letting some line out. I thought maybe that if I continued on down, I can tease them in the hitting. No. Okay, let me go through another cast here. See if I can get that one. See if I can get it right on down there. Now I'm letting a little line out. I have my bail on open, and I'm just kicking some some line out so that it has a better drift. There we go. I got a hit right there. Now you got what you got to do is though, is close that bail and get ready to hit it because you got a lot of line out, and I got the bail open. I should have had one right there. It's going to come to the end of the uh, end of the drift. I thought I had a hit right there. Must have, it took my bait. Again, just go ahead and, and uh, open your bale and do your normal cast. Now you see how a bobber works, how you can work a bobber with, with this uh, light tackle here. You can put it right above the tree and let it go right on down. If you try to do that without the bobber, it would probably hang up or you probably get it caught in the tree. But you can see how it floated right down underneath there. And that's usually a good general area for, for the trout to be feeding that. See, I got a couple hits right in there. Okay, I'm right at the end of my cast there, so I'm going to bring it in. And we'll run it by there again. This time I'll go up a little higher. What it's going to do now, I gave it enough drift, it's going to come right along that edge of that, that vegetation that is uh, across the bank there, and it's going to go right underneath this tree limb. Right underneath the tree limb, you see that? Right underneath. Cleared it really nice, really nice. And that's one, one good point about fishing with a bobber. It gives you a good, consistent float. You don't have to worry about hanging up on the bottom when you're, when you're fishing like this in the stream. You have it at a certain depth, and you already know that that's the depth where you caught one, one fish, so you just keep it right there. Okay, I'm right now, so you can see it's starting to pull and come right to my rod because I'm at the end of my line there. So I'll just bring it in, and we'll just do it again. That way, you, you, by using the bobber, you're, you're eliminating a lot of uh, snags, and you can get right into place, just like there. I got right into the bush, and it's drifting naturally, just like it would do, be doing if I had my fly pole and I was using bait with my, with my floating fly line. This is the same, 
same thing that you're getting from this te this technique here. It's floating. There, I got to hit right there. I got to hit right there. Missed him. So it's it's giving you the same same uh, drift as if I was using my fly pole. We'll try it again. I just drifted right underneath that tree. I'm going to have to check that bobber out. The bobber is leaning on its side. I think that I have it either caught on the line. You have to check your uh, your bobber out every so often because it will get snagged up in your in your li in your line there. Let's see if I can get him to hit right there. There's a hit right there. Okay, I'm right at the end of my uh, the end of my cast. I'm going to bring it in and I'm going to check the uh, the bobber here. At the same time, I want to kick, kick a couple steps back because there's some good vegetation on on my left here, and I don't want to walk into it. I want to be able to fish that vegetation. Even though this seems like it's being pretty productive on my right-hand side, but I don't want to uh, to limit myself just to fishing one one side because this is a real good area in here. Now this right here, where the bobber just landed, is very still water. I don't know how deep that is, but I'm going to keep it. It seems like it's hanging up there, so maybe I'll have to change the depth. It's not drifting. I'm right at the end of my drift there. I hate to move into this pool, but I would like to try to drift it right along that vegetation and still keep this over here for, fish, for uh, fishing too because it's a real good area in here. But uh, let me go back and fish this side here a little bit. Again, I'm using the bobber and I got about a two and a half foot depth in there. This is above my knee, so oh, I got to hit right there. So it is pretty deep in here. So two and a half feet is a pretty good in-between level for these fish to be feeding. Let me see if I could come back with that. Instead of opening up the bale, I'm just going to uh, feed it in my hand here so I can get the same distance of cast out and see if I can pick them up. Yeah, that was about right in there where I had that hit. Oh. Okay, well, let me bring it in here. I had to get it across over there along that bank, so I'm going to, uh, oh, I lost my bait there, too. So I'm going to uh, freshen up my bait here. And I'm going to put the bobber on that far bank on the right there and let it drift. Let some line out. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to have my open bale. I'm not going to close the bale this time because I want to feed it some line and see if I can uh, drift it. Okay, I'm not in the current yet. So just kind of tug on it there until you see that bobber taking off. There we go. So I want to feed it some more line here because I want it to continue drifting on there. I don't want it to stop. I want it just to have have its way and just have it go right into there and see if I can pick one up out of there. And if I had the bale closed, then right now is where it should have locked in and stopped the drift on the bobber. So I want it to drift right on by and go right on by the limb right there in that. So I just want to pull it away like I am now and kind of guide it around right in there. Now I should straighten out. That was me when I closed the bale because I'm right at the end of my cast there. And you can see it's starting to pull with me. It's just starting to come around. But that's exactly, I uh, accomplished exactly what I wanted to do. Now that's real good water in there, so what you want to do is just bring that bobber in real slow. You don't want to scare any fish that might be feeding in that area. So just bring it in real slow. 
and we'll just duplicate that cast again. We'll just do it right over again and see if we can get one. Maybe we teased one out and he's just waiting for another opportunity to hit. And I lost one of my salmon eggs. I like to, to uh, bait up with two salmon eggs. I don't know why, but I think that I have, uh, I'm presenting a better, a better bait to him by having two salmon eggs. Not only that, the two salmon eggs will completely cover up a size 10 hook. If you just put one salmon egg on, you won't cover it up. And I guess that's just the way I've been fishing is that whenever I fish, I always like to cover up my hook completely with the bait that I'm using. Now I'm going to open up that bale a little bit. So I do the same thing with this hook here, or uh, the same method that I use, is I like to use two salmon eggs. So even if I lose one, I have another one on there and I can continue fishing. Because you don't really know once you cast, if you have one egg, you don't know if you lost it at the beginning of your cast. So actually you're floating down there with no, with no offering at all. So I like to put to two salmon eggs on so that at least I have a, a, a chance of, of having something drift down and present something to them at all times. Now I even let it continue on and I'm going to bring them back in here. I didn't even pick up a little nudge there so I'm going to let it go to the end of my cast and just bring Well, I'm using, uh, right now I'm using the uh, drifting technique without the bobber. I had those two fish in and I uh, stopped getting the hits with the fish, I mean with the bobber, so I went back to just the natural drift without the bobber. And I'm continuing here to get some hits without the bobber. So I took it off. I'm still just using the, uh, the swivel and the hook. And that's it, no weight. I lost one of my salmon eggs, so I'll put one back on. I think I failed to mention I am using red salmon eggs. I am using the red salmon eggs. And the brand really doesn't matter. Uh, it doesn't matter to the fish, they're still going to hit it. If they're hungry, they'll hit any brand. Now that I said that, the fish are going to start getting uh, picky now. But I have I hadn't had any trouble with with using a certain brand, one brand over the other, and there we go, red salmon eggs. It's usually got a hit. Missed them. Don't say that. I'll cut it out. I'll cut it out. Who sponsors? Shit, I don't have any sponsor. My sponsor right now is my wife. What sponsor? Again, I like to mention I took that bobber off and I'm just using the natural drift. With just the uh, swivel and the hook. And the salmon egg. Again, go ahead and open your bale and cast it out and then just tighten it up and let it go na go to a natural drift down and just kind of go with it. You're, you're turning with your current and your line there. You don't stand in one spot and let it go down. You kind of turn with it. As your line is going down, you're turning parallel to... thought I was getting a hit there. 
to when you're starting up here and you're going parallel with the current with the water and then you're coming back this way so your your line goes with a natural drift if you just cast it out and stayed right here then we wouldn't have a drift because it would get to the end of your of your line there and it would just tug right on in so you want to give a little bit of drift with the water and look like natural bait so that when the fish are naturally feeding they'll come by and they'll pick it up or they'll come up to it and pick it up So when you're using a spinning outfit like this, there's three or four different techniques that you can use in stream fishing. You can use the bobber, or like I am here, you can drift it, uh, just tighten it up and and have your hand on the uh, the crank of the reel, ready to hit that to strike it as soon as it hits. The fish hits and then reel it in. Or again, you can I'll show you on the next cast. You can use a, a complete different technique to where you close the bail and then you drift with it. When your bait is drifting down, you take a, uh, a little bit of the line in your hand and hold it so that you can feel, instead of leaving the, uh, the tip take the bite, you can feel it in your hand here when you get the bite. And then what you do is when you do get the bite and you do hook them, then you just let this line loose gradually when you're playing the fish and then take your hand off of this line, your left hand off of the line and take it right down to the crank of the, of the uh, reel, which I'll show you right now. Now if I had a hit and I had one on and I, and I did pull up the strike, I let the line go and play the fish and then take my hand to the reel and then start reeling in. So that's another drift method that you can use when you're using an ultralight or a spinning reel and you're drifting with bait. Again, you just pull it out and just let it drift. So instead of feeling the, the bite on your, on your rod tip, you're feeling it in your hand. And it just depends on, on what's comfortable for you, what, what you like to use. Uh, you pick out the... Uh, the technique that you, you think would be comfortable for you to use. Or again, you can go right to the bobber and then you can set it up with the, the depth that you want already and you just cast it right on out and then just let the bobber take it down. So a again, it just depends on what, what fits your way of fishing. I gotta hit there. Me, I still like to watch the line. I like to watch the line at right where it enters the water, and then I can see it, and then I can feel it at the same time. I can feel it in my hand or on the rod tip, whichever one I'm, whichever technique I'm using. Now he took that bait, so I'm not going to take any more steps. I'm going to stay right here and see if I can hook him. So I like to watch the the, the line in the water, right at the point. I watch right where the water, the, the line actually goes into the water. And then I feel it on the rod tip or in my hand, whichever way I do it. Now, of course, when you're using a bobber, you're watching the bobber because the bobber's gonna tell you when you got the strike. But right now, I'm watching the line right where it enters the water. There, I got a little tap right there. There, I got another little tap. But nothing that I want to hit yet. It's just, they're just like playing with it or nudging it away. Because I've entered their area of where they're feeding and they don't want to hit it. They might, I've even had, or like I was going to say, they might even be hitting the swivel. The swivel attracts them and they might even be hitting the swivel. So now the next time I give them the offering, instead of hitting the swivel since he didn't get anything to eat, he'll come right down and he'll see the, uh, see the salmon egg and maybe he'll hit the salmon egg this time. But again, I had two hits, but I didn't think that they were strong enough to, to uh, strike on them. So I just let them go, thinking that maybe that they'll take it again downstream and tap on it downstream. I've been describing to you, I haven't changed anything, I might have change when I took put the bobber on and took it off but you just got to feel when 
when there's nothing happening with the bobber, then it's time to take it off. Maybe they're feeding down lower or... or Is it on? And again, like I was saying, I just open bale cast, and you just go ahead and let it go down, drift down, bring your rod down, your rod tip, have your hand on your reel so that when you do strike, your reel won't go backwards on you with the pressure of the strike. So you want to keep your hand on the reel handle and uh, get ready to strike because when you do pull up, it will back it up. And you don't want that to happen, especially when you're uh, when you got yourself a hit and you're and you're right in the middle of fighting them. You look down and you're and you got a bird nest in the, in your reel here. Good hit. Good hit. Let's go back and get that one. That one was a good hit. In fact, he caught me off guard here. Uh, I was ready to, uh, it was at the end of my cast, I was ready to reel it in, and I was kind of caught flat-footed there. I wasn't expecting him to hit it at that time because it was at the end of my drift. So I was ready to uh, to bring it in, and I didn't even expect him that he would hit it right at that, that point. So let's see. Uh, this is about where I just kind of lost my concentration and I was thinking about reading it in and he hit it. So I'll let it hang there just for a while. No. Nope. Let me take a couple more steps here. Now the whole technique of, of fishing this way is letting it drift down natural to try to create a natural, whoa, missed them, a natural uh, bait going down. That's why uh, I like to use a light drift, again, with just the uh, swivel and the hook so that when the bait goes down, tries to uh, look as natural as possible to the fish. See if I can pick them up here. Again, I'm watching my line where it enters the water and I'm feeling the end of the rod tip for the hit. I got my left hand on the crank of the reel, ready to reel it in and start my, my reeling as soon as I set the hook. So I'm all ready to go. Open the bail, flip it out there, close the bail, tighten it up a little bit. And just let, let, there's a hit, two hits right there. Let's see if I can get them. I 
They were just nudges. They aren't. They aren't as aggressive as as when they're really going to take it. They're just nudging it. So I don't want to disturb them. I didn't want to strike at that time because it really wasn't a good enough hit. I got one taking it. Fish on. Fish on. It's coming right in at me. Nice fish. Nice fish. Nice fish. Now this is about the larger trout you're going to get. This is a, whoa, this is a 12 incher here. And he is feisty. He took this one. Let me clean him off here. Show him to you. Nice fish. Nice fish. I'd like to mention that um, this column is fe just just. I like to mention that uh, Alameda Creek is featured in my weekly column uh, that comes out in the Daily Review in the Argus on Thursdays. Uh, I write the East Bay Fishing Guide, and during the trout season between April and November, I do feature it in my column, uh, along with 15 other uh, East Bay and Bay Area waters. Uh, it's called the East Bay Fishing Guide. It's in the sports section of the, of the Daily Review, the Argus, the Alameda Time Star, and the and Tri-City Herald. It comes out every Thursday, and it's on, like I said, it's in the um, sports. You hope Well, I had a couple of hits there. I thought I was going to be able to get one out of this couple of casts. Let's see if I can get one here. Again, I'm just casting it out there and letting it drift down on its own, own motion of the uh, of the current. There we go. Hit. Again, these are just little taps. They aren't really that strong where you want to set the hook. Again, you don't want to scare them. And you want to leave, let them sit there and, and wait for the next cast, and maybe they'll they'll take it on the next one. That was real light. Again, I'm watching my the end of my line there where it enters the water, and I have my other hand on the reel. I thought I got a little hit there on the reel, ready to uh, to to start reeling it and and setting the hook at the same time, and also um, holding the reel so it doesn't back up. Now a lot of the reels have a stop, but if I'm not right at that stop, it will turn half of a turn before it stops when you bring your pole up, and I'll demonstrate that in a minute here when I don't really have one because I hate to have it done to me when I do have one. So I'll demonstrate that. Now, if I didn't have my hand on the reel and I do have a strike, when I pull it up, you can see that it did come around a little bit. It did come around and I'll show you here. See, it will. If, I, if you're not right at the right place for it to stop, your reel will unwind backwards on you. And none of that, if you if you don't have one with a stop on it, then it'll just continue spinning around one time 
and then it'll automatically stop anyway. But I don't even want that slack in there when you hit that, when you do bring it up to, uh, to strike on the fish when he hits it, you don't want that slack in there. So you want to strike a, 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 a tight strike. Because even that little slack that brings your, if you don't have your hand on the, on the reel and it, it does flip around, when you do strike, that's just enough slack that fish needs to throw that hook. So you want to keep that tension on there from the beginning. You want to keep that tension and, and keep that, that strike as tight as you can so that he doesn't have any slack to throw that hook out. Got one. Now I have uh, a lot of experience fishing in this creek here, in Alameda Creek. I have fished this since I was uh, three years old. My uncle brought me down here for the first time and I have my son sitting on the shore bank there watching me uh, film this, this segment of the program and I would like to bring this in to him and let him bring this fish in so that I could just continue on the, uh, the tradition here. This is a nice little trout. I'm just gonna bring him in over here so that he can reel it in. Come on, Brian. I'm gonna bring him in here. Back up, back up, you back up. Come on, Brian. I'm gonna let him reel this one in right here. Come on, Brian. Come on, take a pull from Daddy. Come on. Come on, take the pole right there and wind it in. Come on, bring him in. Come on, daddy will help you. Good boy, now my son's only two years old and this is his first fish here. He's seen me. That's it, reel in son, reel in, reel in. There we go. Good boy. Yeah. Good boy, let's bring it up here and show everybody. Look at Brian. Yeah. Tom. Yeah. Hi. First fish, huh, Brian? Yeah. Two years old. Can I At the one same too? time, same same age that Daddy was. Can I count one too? Yeah. Wait. Wanna hold him? Yeah. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's show. Uh, I'd like to uh, uh, mention again that I was using a ultralight spinning setup with six pound test and as you can see um, throughout the show it was very easy uh, fishing and catching the fish with the setup that I was using. Well I hope you enjoyed today's show again and I enjoyed my son catching that last fish there. Uh, it kind of just added uh, on to the tradition of, of me fishing in the canyon and now I'll pass it on to him and as he gets older, he can say that he caught his first fish when he was two years old, just like I can say. In fact, I've caught my fish right here in the same area that I'm at now. Well, until next time, this is Fred Beliba. Good luck and good fishing to you.